Greetings, fellow Insomniacs, and welcome to Insomniac Gaming Theater. I am your host, The Crazy Player. Welcome back to our Let's Learn series for Dark Souls 1. This is Death Doesn't Matter, Part 3. And subtitled, Are You Crazy? The answer is yes. Yes, I am. Because um, we are about to go do something that is extremely, extremely ridiculous. So, we have been through, we have grabbed a whole bunch of stuff from the graveyard and have gone through Dark Root Basin, Dark Root Garden, through the Undead Parish, and grabbed a whole bunch of equipment. And now we're going to go down into the catacombs. And we are going to go fight. Um, blanking the boss's name. My apologies. We're going to go fight Pin. Now, there are a lot of people who are going to be like, Are you kidding? We're going to the catacombs? Spoiler alert. Catacombs is extremely, extremely dangerous. And we're going to die a lot on our way down. So I need to preface all of this with the understanding that this is the most optional part of this whole thing. Because you can absolutely choose not to do this. You can choose not to go down into the catacombs and not to fight Pinwheel at this point. In which case... We will end up doing it after Ornstein and Smo. Because we're going to have to go through the catacombs again anyway then. But here's the here's the reason we're doing it. A, there are a couple of important there are a couple of very good weapons that can be very strong early on in the game. And B, Pinwheel can be killed with the level of power that we currently possess. I know I have done it before myself. So we are going to head down there. And we are going to try and kill Pit. Now, this is going to, so let's get rolling and I'll show you how we can do it. We're going to be abusing the aggro reset and we are going to be abusing the uh we're gonna be abusing a number of the Candles in this. Now, I must stress as we head down here, under no circumstances, none whatsoever, should you actually sit at any of the bonfires. If you sit at one of the bonfires down here, that will make you the respawn point, and chances are you will not be able to get back out. It is much, much more difficult. Alright, so we're down here. We're going to We randomly got some souls. Presumably because somebody fell off the edge of the cliff. Now, see, see that glow? Those are from exploding skulls. They do exactly what they sound like. They explode. Want to go down this way? Want to fall down here? Want to go in here. And we want to go... Ah. We want to go in here. And if we can, we want to kill... We want to kill this guy. See? We're gonna die. Alright. That guy is technically optional. I wanted to try and kill him because if he gets killed, then... Uh, the enemies stop respawning and that guy doesn't respawn is... And when I say respawning, let me be clear. Skeletons of the catacombs don't stay dead when you kill them, even if you don't set it upon fire. Unless you are using a holy weapon. Which actually, technically we are, but it doesn't matter because we are not going to take the time to fight these guys. 
They are not worth getting into the fight. Oh, I've missed them. I believe this is Deuce's crown shield. No. Great character, not very. The shield is not very useful. And if anybody got that reference. Very happy. Alright. So we are going to run down here. It actually kind of doesn't matter if we reset the aggro because those get, because A, those guys are going to be chasing us the whole way, and B, it's the catacombs. We're going to be running through skeletons the whole time anyway. Fall down here. Run down this way. Here. Really, the important part of coming down here isn't killing the necromancer. It's this. Now, while you're touching this thing, you can't actually be killed. Yeah, we can't even light the bonfire because there are enemies close at hand. That's why I'm using the grass crest shield. We're we're going to be running a lot. Ah, so close. Oh well. Yeah, strap in, folks. This is going to be a long one. Now, we had to hit that lever because if we didn't, we weren't going to be able to progress. So, we hit that lever, and now we are going to run on some... So, run past this guy, fall off the edge. Fall down here, run through here. This time, instead of going in that way, we can just run through because we opened this doorway. Reset and all right. So we're gonna get some weapons first, but ultimately we're gonna want to jump off of here onto a ledge down there. We can just barely see that mark. First, we're going to go through here, and we're going to get some items. We got the backstab on the Necromancer, and we are invulnerable while we do that, but... Now, I'm moving through this at a pretty quick pace, and it's very easy to get lost down here. In fact, I'm a little lost right at the second. Okay. Ah. Stop it. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, their they're scimitars do bleed. Scimitars don't normally do bleed, but their scimitars do. Whatever. Death doesn't matter. Alright. So we're trying to grab as many items as we can. Because that's what we're really in it for. 
the items and the item that we get from killing Pinwheel. Technically, we are going to want to keep the souls that we get from Pinwheel, but once we kill Pinwheel, we're just going to Homeward Bone out. We are not going to try and climb out. That's why I'm not sitting at any of the bonfires down here. We don't want to set our reset point down here. We want to be back at Firelink every time. So we come down here, we turn left, run past these guys. Run past these guys. Alright, I got nicked a little bit. We reset aggro. I may cut out some of these runs and make it tedious. But you cut through here. Turn left, go right, left again, and ah. Uh, yeah, my memory's good, but it's not photographic. Sometimes I get a little lost down in the catacombs, too. It's annoying, but it is what it is. We're going to keep going until we get this. I may cut out some of the deaths if this episode runs a little too long. And it gets too repetitive. Run down here. Follow the wall to the right. Somebody fell to their death. Like I said, the most deadly enemy in the game is gravity, and it does not discriminate. Oh, screw. That was the bull. Alright, we're going to reset the aggro here. Because if we don't, we're not going to make it to the next area. Because we are... Actually, we're not going to be fighting. Since we're going to be grabbing items first and then probably do a run just to get straight to Pinwheel. We can We don't have to worry about conserving our Estus. But in general... But when you actually come down here to try and fight Pinwheel, you want to try and conserve your Estus. reset aggro so that I can have a second to use my Estus flask. And then roll. We're going to go down here. We're going to jump this way. Left. You know you're going the right way if you see the skeleton archer because then you immediately want to run to the right. And we want to run this way. Don't run too close to these statues because they have exploding or they have spikes that come out of them. We're going to run back here. We're going to roll through this and grab the item. And then we are going to reset aggro if we can. Got it. By the way, this is one of those things what I meant when I said everything is permitted. This is a perfectly valid tactic, given the circumstances. We're going to push in this lever. And then we're going to run it past these guys. It's a 
said don't run too close to the statues when they run too close to the statues. Alright. We're gonna run over here. And then we're gonna go down here. And down here. And this is the great side. This is generally considered to be one of the best dexterity weapons in the game. We're gonna pop down here. We're gonna hit this. Which opens another passageway. And we're gonna get killed by a neck. It's fun. So now we're gonna actually try and get to Pinwheel. Because we wanted to get to the Great Scythe. I don't have the stats to use the Great Scythe right now, but it is it is technically a halberd requires 14 strength and 14 dexterity and has a strong bleed effect. Um, it is also, it is, it eventually, if you upgrade it far enough, has very good strength skin, or skin, dexterity skin. It is generally considered to be one of the better dexterity weapons in the game, um, especially for player versus environment. All right, that said, now we're gonna try and get the pin. We want to, as much as possible, try and conserve our... We want to try and conserve our essence on the way down because we want to keep it for the fight with Pinwheel. But that said, we actually want to get to the fight. So this is also an exercise in learning how to properly spend your resources. So we run down here, we take the left, run straight through. We run past these guys. One of them threw themselves off the edge, and then we log out. And then we, okay, if I do this right, ah, crap, yeah, I didn't get the, so I landed on the edge, but I hit the roll button one too many times and rolled off the, I hit where I wanted to, but I hit the roll button one too many times and rolled to my doom. So, we need to do that same thing, only better, and not roll that additional time. Excuse me. Hey folks, crew, don't mind me, just having a nice trip down to the catacombs, as you can see here. Random 50 souls because somebody fell off a cliff. Oh, interesting point to mention is that the exploding skulls can, in fact, explode the skeletons, and even if there's a necromancer around, it kills them. Just like falling to their death kills them. Actually kills them. I suppose technically we could do this offline in order to make it a little bit faster to reload. Ultimately, 
It's not that big of a deal. All right, we're gonna hit nest this flask because if we don't, we're not gonna we're not gonna survive the fall. We lived. All right. So we're going to hit the Estus. And we are going to run in here. We are going to... Ah, I didn't mean to hit the Estus again. But we are going to reset the aggro. Because we are going to get another Covenant and a powerful weapon. Not for the build I'm planning to use. But I want to show you guys how to get as much of the stuff as possible. So at the end of this hallway is one of those big demon guys we ran past before. But we're not actually interested in him. We're interested in this. Now, this guy can't throw lightning. So we're going to come to the back of the hallway here. We are going to log out to reset his aggro. Then we are going to grab this item. We need one... These are eyes of death. They are part of the covenant. Yet. And then we are going to run past him again. Try not to get hit. We are going to reset aggro one more time. And then we are going to nestle in the coffin. And we need to wait here until the thing happens. I haven't timed how long it takes, but it's the thing that happens. Yeah, we don't have his aggro, so we can just sit here. If you don't have the eyes of death that you get from behind him, then this doesn't happen. So this is the space that we will see much, much later. We are in the Tomb of Giants, though. And this is actually a spot that we will come much later in our quest because we are going to fight this guy. This is Grave Lord Nito. For now, we are going to pray to the sarcophagus and we are going to enter the Covenant. Since we can change it to any bonfire, that's fine. But the important part is this. We get the Gravelord Sword and the Gravelord Sword Dance Miracle. The sword is really the more important thing. Thank you, Nito. And then... So if you've been angling more towards a strength build, um, then with a high enough strength, I think it's you need 18 in order to two-hand this. Um, for an early game weapon, this sucker is, if you have the stats to wield it, even two-handed, this sucker is ridiculous. It does so um, thing is, I not angling that way, but if you are, if you are even close, this can be a really, really strong weapon, and a few hits from it will take down 
most of the bosses in the early section of the game. That's part of the reason why we came here to grab it. Um, it's so if you were doing a strength or even a quality build. Now later in the game, it falls off because the scaling is terrible. But in the early game, it is very strong. All right, so we're going to nestle in the coffin again. Fortunately, we don't have to wait nearly as long this time. Now, the Grave Lord Servants are a PvP covenant, and they're not really a PvP covenant that you can engage in very well until you're ready for New Game Plus, because the only people who are affected by it are people in New Game Plus or later, and if you are not up to their weight class, they will destroy you. We're going to run away from that guy. As quickly as we can. I don't hear a bunch of stomping and crunching, so I don't think we aggro him, just to be sure. Actually, we're fine. He can't get through this space. He's, uh, just, he's too big for it. So we're going to get out here, and then we need to... So we're dropping down here, and then our call this one is very difficult until you stick properly. Nice. So that's the cleric's gear. We need to go that way, but the problem is that we have somewhat diminished health, and we have... So these are what are commonly referred to as pinwheel skeletons. And these little, these little bastards, if they run over you whilst they're doing their wheel thing, they will kill you. Like, it almost doesn't matter what what your health is, what your armor is, but especially at this level, they will destroy you. So, we're going to take a sip. And then we are going to run, boy, run. All right, we managed to not get completely hurt. All right, so we cannot reset aggro once we get through there. We'll just end up on the other side of the light or worse, back up where we started. And unfortunately, there is no way to enter this fight at completely full health because there is no way to enter this fight at completely full health because we have to fall in. So we're going to start with our fireball. We're going to get a little cutscene here. This one's the original. And we want to hit him as hard as we can, as fast as we can. So, there are always... We can't backstab him, but it doesn't matter as long as we can 
keep hitting. Now, his illusions, if we hit them, they disappear in one. So we do want to hit them. Come on. Ah, dang it. See, first attempt. Oh, no! No! Okay, we got the right of kindling, which was the important part to get the souls. Oh, no. Oh, that's the worst, because then we have to go back down there to get the souls. Oh. You know what? Good. We got the important part. The right of kindling, which allows us to boost bonfires up to 20. Would I have liked to have all of those souls? Yes. Yes, I would. That would have been really good for us? Yes. Yes, it would have been. But, alas, we did not get the soul. But we got the important part. And we killed him on our first attempt. And thus ends the death doesn't matter portion of our video series. Um, Next time, we will be actually going in the direction the game wants us to go and heading through the Undead Berg and into the Undead Parish. Yes, technically, we already have a shortcut up there, but we have things we need to do. And there is stuff that we need to get while we are... So, we are going to progress through the normal progression now. We are going to stop sequence breaking for a little while and do where the and do what the game wants us to do. But until next time, get some rest. Thank you for joining us here at Insomniac Gaming Theater. If you enjoyed the content, feel free to give us a like, subscribe, or support us through the Patreon link in the description.